you guys and welcome back to my channel so as you can tell from the title of today's video today's video is going to be what i think y'all should know before y'all decide to go get a bbl a bbl i'm just gonna just gonna, what i'm just gonna let y'all know just for some of y'all that may end up clicking on this video and really don't know what the fuck i'm talking about so a bbl is a brazilian butt lift and just where they take the fat from wherever you decide on your body and they enter that fat into your buttocks it's 100% your fat. It's 100% real. I don't know why a lot of people like to say, like, if you got a BBL, that your shit is fake. I don't know. You know, people would be mad. People would be so mad. But anyway, so today's video is going to be what I think y'all should know before y'all get a BBL. Because these are things that I feel like I wish I would have knew that nobody told me about getting a BBL. So if y'all don't know, I did just come back from France. My town. And I did, wait, I got my little France flag. If y'all don't know, I got a little Haitian flag right here. Do y'all see it? I got my Haitian flag. Wait, what the fuck? I got my Haitian flag up there. And then when I seen the big ass France flag, y'all know I had to copy it. Anyways, that's not important. So I do have what I was thinking about the other day written down. So if y'all see me reading off my phone, that's why. So the first thing I think that y'all should know in regards to getting a bbl is all about the money okay so i feel like for instance if your surgery is ten thousand dollars you don't just want to have ten thousand dollars because when you get to wherever you're going regardless if it's miami dominican republic colombia turkey because i didn't even know they do bbls in turkey but they do bbls in turkey but um wherever it is you're going you always want to have at least at least three thousand dollars more than whatever your surgery costs just because of just because you go somewhere to get a surgery doesn't mean that your body's really like gonna be ready for that surgery for example me i went all the way to columbia by the grace of god i had no complications like beforehand my iron was good wasn't pregnant things like that like everything was gucci wasn't on birth control don't smoke no cigarettes everything was a one there was a female that was in the recovery house with me and she had like I believe she had low iron, she had to get blood transfusions, she had to pay for blood transfusion, transfusions. And when you pay, you pay for like, you you pay the recovery house or the Airbnb or wherever you're staying, you pay for the amount of days you plan on staying there. But if you don't know, you got to get blood transfusions, which prolongs your surgery, which means you got to pay the recovery house more money to stay there longer. So all these things can happen and... If you don't have the money, then you just shit out of luck. So you want to have extra money because anything can happen. You might want to buy um, new fajas if you got your if you get your breast done. Excuse me. You might want to buy um, new bras. And then in that wherever you are, you know they do like micro. What's that shit called for your eyebrows? Micro blading. They do like micro blading. When I went to Columbia, I got my eyelashes done. So you just want to have extra money. I know some people really just save up to that cap of how much the surgery costs but you don't want to go out there or go wherever you're going if you don't have extra money because it's, it's going to be bad for you so even on top of that if you end up having to stay long you have to push your flight and then you might have to pay more so you just want to make sure you have extra money okay because you don't want to be stranded in Colombia or stranded in dr or just stranded and you ain't got no bread that's just horrible it's horrible so the next thing on my list that I think y'all should know is all about your iron. So I believe, well, it depends on the doctor. Some doctors don't perform, won't perform on you if you have um, less than 12.0 12, 12 iron, which is your, I think, I believe it's called your hemo, hemoglobin, whatever. So me, if y'all don't know, I got iron infusions before I left for surgery. And I, my iron, I think, was like a 12.0, 13. Let me see. Hold on, guys. I think it was 13.0. I don't want to load. I'm pretty sure my iron was 13.0. So, what the hell? So, I was good to go. Um, a lot of, a lot, a lot of females go there. And they don't get their labs before they go. So, before you even leave for your surgery, I don't care if that bitch is in your state. You need to go to your provider and you need to get your iron levels. Because you're going to waste all your money going out there if your iron is not up there. And if your iron is low and your surgeon still wants to perform on you... You need to fucking run like that ass. You need to run. Oh, public announcement. Sorry, y'all. I forgot to tell y'all. So I am getting a round two. If you don't know what a round two is, basically I'm getting a BBL again. I'm getting just a BBL and I might get ab etching. I'm not too sure, but 
as of right now i am getting around to bbl i'm waiting for my quote from this one doctor and he's my second option but he still has a roll back and they usually well the lady said that i was going to get a reply within 24 to 72 hours and my gut is telling me to go with this other person which is my first choice and it's been a week and i still have not gotten a quote back so i think that's god giving me a sign not to go for the, with the second person and to go with the first person so i may go with the first person as soon as this video is done i'm going to send that person an email so that being said i will be getting around to I'm not trying to go alone. I'm trying to actually go with somebody this time. So I'm not sh too sure of the date. But it will be next year because I'm going to Jamaica for my birthday. So, oosh, oosh. Okay, yeah, my fault. Yeah, I had to delete some stuff off my memory card. So as I was saying, um, fluffing. So no one told me about fluffing. I didn't know what the fuck it was. I was, all right, anyway. So when I went and as I was saying, no one told me what the fuck fluffing was, right? So it kind of caught me. It kind of caught me by surprise. I was really shocked. I was depressed. I was sad. That's how nine times out of ten, after your surgery, that's how you're gonna feel because your results don't kick in yet. So nine times out of ten, when you finish your surgery, you're gonna be like, "The fuck! I need to go back and get around too, or um, my ass still flat or whatever." So, in my experience, when I went to Columbia got my BBL. As soon as I saw my booty in the mirror the first time, I cried because it was long, it was hard, and it was flat. So I started crying and I was like sad and I told the doctor and I was like, yo, like what the fuck is this? I told the doctor's assistant, I was like, yo, my ass is mad little. And they laughed and they were like, girl, like give me a couple of months, you're going to see. And I'm looking at them like, did I just pay all this money and go through all this pain? To get nothing like i was so fucking depressed right i'm gonna insert pictures of how flat my booty was y'all gonna be like what the fuck so fluffing basically is i don't even know how to explain it. it's basically when you hit like your three to four i think three to four maybe fifth month mark and your ass goes soft so yeah when you get your bbl your booty is going to be hard now it differentiates what it is different depending on the body of the person me it took me probably like november i got my surgery november 14th november 14th december 14th general it took me three months to fluff so uh my butt didn't go soft until i got here in germany so from when, when i was in campbell and when i went home on leave to come into germany my shit was hard as fuck so i'm not gonna lie to y'all i am gonna insert pictures to show y'all the difference so i'm gonna insert a picture right here to show y'all how hard and flat and long it looks before it fluffs and then i'm gonna insert a picture here of how it looks when it finally fluffs now i don't remember the exact day that it happened i just woke up one day and i was like oh shit my ass is off now i'm like okay yay but initially like it just looked so fucking bad um another thing how you sleep everybody asks me how the fuck did i sleep being that I got my breast done and my booty done. So um, while I was in Colombia, I slept in a recliner. I slept laid back and the pillow was under my butt. When I got home, well, Kentucky, I slept on my back with the pit with a pillow, my BBL pillow under my thighs and then a pillow under my back. So my butt didn't touch the bed. Um, it took about five months till I could finally sleep on my chest and that was the hardest part for me because I I can I, I can only sleep on my chest like I had to sleep ooh, I don't have no under on y'all <laughs> I had to sleep like when I was in my bed I had to sleep like like a statue like this because it was just so painful it was painful for me to get on the bed it was painful for me painful for me to get off the bed it was just a lot so you do you you also you see what your sleep is gonna suffer so y'all need to know that shit because your sleep is definitely gonna change it's gonna suffer so fluffing all my advice to you guys you guys always write me recently actually a lot of females been writing me like my ass um is flat it's hard like oh my god what did i do i'm so disappointed don't even be disappointed yo you gotta give it time to see your results in the beginning my breast was like on my fucking like damn near on my fucking collarbone and then eventually it will go down and it will settle so just you have to be patient and you, you really got to be patient 
at the surgery because you will like drive yourself fucking crazy okay, another thing i think y'all should know before you get a bbl is you keep it a stack man keep it a stack y'all gotta be ready for the hate like like you gotta be ready for the hate you gotta make sure when you do your bbl or when you do your surgery you're doing it for you because the hate is real and i'm telling you it's like if you weak it's gonna like you're gonna feel like shit but if you a strong individual you're gonna brush that shit off but i'm telling you it's real like it's gonna come from family it's gonna come from friends it's gonna come from people you don't even know people gonna come one time let me tell you what happened this girl i used to she we used to be in the same battalion so like if you know no army terminology we wasn't like the same I don't even know how to explain it and somebody explained battalion in for civilians or whatever so we worked together but we didn't work close together and me and her barely talked but she used to always when she heard i was gonna bbl she was like oh i want to get a bbl and mind you shorty had no fat on her so bitch i know you're lying you're not trying to get a bbl you don't have enough fat to get a bbl and she was like oh, i want to get a bbl but you know i just i don't want a hard ass but soon as i got my surgery done i came back off a leave went to work the first thing she did was put her arm out to grab my butt. I don't even know you like that. Why are you trying to touch me? So you got to be, and she hang out with the same bitches that don't like me, but you got to be ready for the hate because the hate is real. And if you're weak, it will tear you down. And bitch, you just can't be weak. You got to be ready for that shit. Niggas will talk shit about you. Your fucking boyfriend might tell you not to do it. Family might cut you off. Like you got to be really ready to like cut off people because bitch, <laughs> y'all gonna see. Y'all think it's a joke. Okay, the next thing on my list for what I think y'all should know is picking a doctor. Now, nine times out of ten, a lot of people pick doctors off of like the hype or Instagram pictures or whatever, um, real self reviews. But a lot of reviews on real self um, is actually paid. So a lot of doctors pay like people to make reviews about them on real self just so they can get more people. So me, I would say when it, Sorry, y'all. I'm all over the place. When it comes to picking a doctor, I would say, honestly, just pick a doctor that you think really cares about you as a, as a patient. So, nine times out of ten, a lot of these doctors, they look at you like you're a customer. You come, they do what they can, they take your money. After that, you leave the country, whatever. They don't even talk to your ass no more. You write them on WhatsApp, they won't even reply. You write them, they block you. You write anything on social media, they block you. They try to ask you to delete it. All type of fuckery shit, but... You gotta find a doctor that really cares for you. And I think that's why I'm gonna go to the first doctor because she seems really caring. Yeah, so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys actually enjoyed this video and hopefully got something out of it. If you guys want me to do more surgery related videos, let me know, comment down below, whatever it is y'all wanna know, and I'm gonna do it. I may do an updated Q&A because a lot of y'all still have questions and I'm tired of writing the same like answer to like hundreds of people. So if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid. Don't be hesitant to hesitant, hesitant, hesitant to comment down below and let me know whatever it is that y'all want me to do videos on. But that is it. Um, I love you guys, and I will see you guys in my next video.